I am reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, and I'm just using the words of Jesus in verse 22 as a text. Now, I will finish this message in its entirety to you that are under the tent tonight, but you that are listening by means of radio, it will be a continued message. I'm reading from the 22nd verse. Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Jesus performing miracles. He's either on his way to heal somebody, or he's coming from a house where he just healed some person, or he is in the midst of healing somebody. I believe in divine healing. And I believe that Jesus wants you well. Now, I am preaching to you church folks tonight. Overcoming faith is the title of this message. And I want to deal with five particular elements. The value of faith, the vision of faith, the voice of faith, the vitality of faith, and the victory of faith. All five of them. And I find all five of these particular elements in this one little experience that this woman had. And may I begin by saying, Jesus had all the gifts. If anybody had the gift of healing, Jesus had it. I don't believe I have any questions there. I don't believe anybody will disagree with me. If anybody had the gift of miracles, Jesus had it. But yet in this particular miracle, he never attributed this miracle to any of the gifts that he himself possessed. This little woman sort of sneaked up on him. And I like what this woman did. She got it on her own. Now, some of you people that are listening to this broadcast, your church doesn't believe in divine healing, so I want to encourage you to tell you you can get it without the aid of your church. I like that. Somebody says, but I don't have anybody to pray for me. Neither did this woman. Nobody anointed her with oil. Nobody gave her a blessed cloth. Nobody prayed over her. But this woman pressed through a crowd and said, He don't have to touch me. Just let me get close enough to where he is and let me touch the hem of his garment. And I know I'll be made whole. Ooh. I'm starting to feel it already. This is the kind of faith that God delights to allow people to receive. What is it that you want from God? Maybe you don't need healing, so we'll just use this in any aspect. Whatever kind of a miracle that you need in your life, I believe you have the necessary withal to bring it to pass. Now, I know the divine sovereignty of God plays its part, but there's also the human responsibility, and you are witnessing the human responsibility. There's something that you must do. There's something that I must do. The church has been sitting in that pew for so long, saying, I believe in miracles, and when the Lord gets ready, He's going to give it to me. No, He's not. It's about time you get up out of that pew and stretch out on God's Word and lay claim to the promise of God for yourself. Can you shout amen, somebody? I want you to look at Luke chapter 8. You that are listening to this broadcast, I read from not only Matthew, but I read from Mark and Luke. But in Luke 8, 43, you will find this verse of Scripture. 
that a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, and neither could be healed of any. Now, I want to talk to you, first of all, about the value of faith. Now, I don't know whether we can put a value on faith, but I know it cost this woman something. It cost her her bank account. Everything that she possessed, all of her life savings. And you hear me, friend. I don't care who you are. You'll spend every dollar you have just to give you an extra year of living. Everybody is searching after health. But I want you to know I found the secret to health. And it's in Jesus Christ. Can you shout praise the Lord with me, somebody? I made a quote here not long ago, and let me repeat it because it bears repeating. And this is not original with me. I heard Dr. C.M. Ward say this. Brother Ward is the one that laid hands on me and anointed me and ordained me way back in the 50s. And I love Brother Ward. And I heard him say on some kind of a talk program on television, and he says, You know, beloved, I believe God is forcing the church. To trust Him. Why, He said the premiums on those health insurance policies are getting so high, He's forcing us back to the Bible way where we got to depend on Him again. And I tell you, he got me out of my chair. And I said, go ahead, Brother Ward. I think it's much better if we learn how to trust God. It won't cost you anything. All you have to do is believe what he said, and he will do it. Can you raise your hands and shout amen? Hallelujah. Now, you know... I pity some of the doctors today because they have to have a high insurance premium for malpractice suits. Because if they operate on you and it don't work, everybody turns around and sues them. But I don't know of anybody that ever sued Jesus. When he does a job, he does it right. And I want you to know he puts a high premium on faith. There is a value for faith. But I want you to know, beloved, there's another side to this value. Do you know that I esteem faith highly? Because in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Oh, hallelujah. So that's a high price tag. If you want to please God, then learn how to put your faith to work. Hear me. You can't even be saved without faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. I don't care what it is you get from God. You've got to employ faith. You can't be justified without faith. The just shall live by faith. God puts a value on faith. If you are going to be sanctified, you are sanctified through faith. If you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you receive the Spirit through faith. And yet when you come for healing, you want everybody else to have it for you. Don't turn the radio off. Keep it on. I'm trying to tell you, you can employ the same element that saved you and sanctified you and justified you and filled you with the Holy Ghost. And you can be healed with the same kind of faith. Hallelujah. In Romans 4, Abraham had faith. He believed God. And it was imputed to him for righteousness. Are you listening to me? A lot of you folks thought righteousness was something else. But you can't be righteous without faith. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? 
Oh man, I tell you, I've got so much in Hebrews 4 and 2. It says they received not because the message that they heard was not mixed with faith. They entered not into the promised land. If you're going to enter into the fullness of God, you've got to mix this word with faith. Jesus is the author and He is the finisher of our faith. He's the one that started you out on your journey and He's the one that's going to bring you through. Can you raise your hand? And shout praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. He puts a value on faith. I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 22. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He never touched the woman. He never prayed for her, but the woman sneaked through a crowd and touched the hem of his garment and drew something out of him. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't come to tell you you don't have faith. I've come to tell you you've got it. But you've got to learn how to put it to work. Can you shout amen? Amen. Now, Luke 8.40. Now, I want you to turn over to Luke again. Keep your Bible open to all these. Luke 44. She came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood staunched. It stopped. How did she come? From behind him. I call this the vision of faith. Faith can see what nobody else can see. Can you shout amen, somebody? And yet, God's people today, they want to see it. Faith can't see it. Hebrews 11 said, But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Turn to that 11th chapter, if you will, of Hebrews. I got it all marked in my Bible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then what do you want to see it for? Somebody says, show me and I'll believe it. God said, believe it and I'll show it to you. Oh, hallelujah. Keep it open there now. Let me get 1113. Let me read what that says. These all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, they embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. They saw something the ordinary man did not see. And hear me. When you have the vision of faith and you begin to claim every promise in that book, that's when all hell breaks loose. Even people in your church will circle their ears and call you crazy. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Somebody says, you don't look healed. I don't care how I look. I'm healed anyway. How do you know you're healed? Because God says I'm healed. Let every man, let every devil be a liar. But let God be true. If he said it, he'll do it. And if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. You with the vision of faith can see the end before it happens. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? Go down in that 11th chapter again. Read this, if you will, the whole, the whole chapter. But look at verse 27. Talking about Moses. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now, don't that sound crazy? See? 
seeing him who is invisible. How in the world can you see something that is invisible? There's only one way you can see it. By faith. And this is the reason why I call this the vision of faith. While everybody was making their approach from in front of him, they were rubbing close to him. Here comes a little woman pressing through a crowd, and she comes up behind him and touches the hem of his garment, and there's only one thing she sees, and that is being well. Doctors couldn't do a thing for her, and all of a sudden, Jesus felt something go out of him, and he said, Who touched me? Here he was touching people, but somebody touched him. And she received one of the greatest miracles of her life because of her faith. Turn to 2 Corinthians, if you will. I hope you don't mind me reading all this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith... And not by sight. Are you helping me now? We walk by faith, but not by sight. Turn back to the fourth chapter of Romans, and let's go back to our father Abraham. And let's read what he says in the 17th verse. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now we're getting down to the nitty grit of it. Nitty gritty of it. Calling those things which be not. Here is a 90 plus year old man, and God said, Abraham, as the stars of the heavens are, and as the sands of the sea is, so shall thy seed be. And Abraham counted those things which be not as though they were. God called Abraham to go out into a far country, and he left not knowing where he was going. Didn't even draw his money out of the bank. But when God spake, he moved because he had faith in his God. Let me go on and read some of this. Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Not to how he felt or how he looked. He looked like an old man. He was an old man. But there's only one thing he considered, and that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform it. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me, somebody? Abraham knew that if God said it, he would do it. And I come to try to encourage every one of you that are under this tent tonight and you that are listening to this broadcast, you can have a vision of faith. You can visionize, visualize yourself being healed by the power of God, not because of what you feel, but because of what God said. He said, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. With the eye of faith, you can lay claim to the promise of God. In the eye of God, you're already well. Are you listening to me? 
in the mind of God, you're already saved. There's enough blood been shed on Calvary 2,000 years ago to save every lost soul. And there's enough of that healing power to heal everybody if God can just find somebody that'll say, I believe He said it. And if He said it, then He's got to do it. And I stand on the naked Word of God and I shall not be moved. I believe what God said and the miracle belongs to me. And I believe when I pray that prayer of faith today, every one of you that are listening to this broadcast, I believe you are going to receive a miracle. Can you shout amen with me? I'm reading from Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Listen, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now go back to that ninth chapter again of Matthew and look at look at verse is it twenty one? Yeah, I believe it is. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. I call this one the voice of faith. She said within herself. Oh, I like this. She said within herself, It's not how loud you shout. Now, you never expect Brother Sandbach to say that the way I holler. But it's not how loud you shout, but whether or not it comes from your heart. Smith Wigglesworth I read where he said, I would rather believe God for five minutes than shout all night. I like that. To believe God. This little woman never advertised it, but within herself, she believed something. Everybody else was going to get a touch from him. And in her heart, she said, he don't have to touch me. Just let me get close enough to touch the hem of his garment. That was her faith. We had a tent up in Sacramento, California. And a little Baptist woman brought in her child who had crossed eyes. And the men were getting the tent all ready, and it wasn't ready for an afternoon service. And she traveled from San Francisco to get a prayer card. I saw her weeping in the back, and I went back and I said, what's wrong, mother? Oh, she said, I brought my daughter who's had crossed eyes since birth. I come for a prayer card, and now you're not having a service. I've traveled these hundreds of miles, and now my daughter, what am I going to do with her? Because I knew that if I could just get her under the tent, her eyes would be straight. I remember what she said. I said, where's your daughter? She said, here she is. She's weeping vehemently. I got down on my knees in the grass and looked into her eyes and I saw two straight eyes. And I said, are you sure this is your daughter? She said, I ought to know my own daughter. I said, you told me she had crossed eyes. Did you ever see a Baptist shout? She got down on her knees and looked into her daughter's eyes. Nobody laid hands on her. She didn't have to get a prayer card. And she grabbed that girl and started running around the tent. God performed a miracle. When did God do it? God took her at her word. I heard her say, if I could just get my daughter under that tent. I know God would heal her. And I believe the moment she stepped inside of that tent, those crossed eyes became straight because God honored her faith. I call it the voice of faith. Can you shout amen, somebody? Won't you tell me faith don't have no voice? I said faith has a voice. If you don't believe it, turn to Romans 10. 9 and 10. You know this one by heart. 
Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah! I'm trying to tell you, faith has a voice. When people come down here to accept Jesus Christ, I try to put words in their mouth to make a confession to believe something in the heart. Now listen, you're not going to be healed just because you say you're healed. We'll straighten that out right now. Not just the confession. You've got to believe something with the heart. There's where it originates. The Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But all we do is have people saying words, and then they wonder why they're not saved. Are you listening to me? We have people saying words, by His stripes I'm healed, and you're still not healed. You've got to believe it in your heart before it will come out of your mouth. Can you shout amen? With the heart, man, believe it! And with the mouth... Confession is made unto... The Greek word is sozo, which means salvation for the soul and healing for the body. And what I'm trying to tell you is that divine healing and salvation go hand in hand. I call them the Siamese twins of the gospel. They are separate, but they are inseparable. If you preach one, you got to preach them both. Can you shout amen? Before Jesus Christ carried your sin and my sin in his body on that tree, they took him to a whipping post, stripped him naked to the waist. They brought a whip down across his back with 40 stripes save one. Medical science declares that there are 39 original diseases and all other sicknesses and diseases stem from one of the original 39. If that be the truth, then I've come to tell you that my elder brother Jesus carried a stripe on his back for all sickness and all disease and all infirmity. And I come to declare unto you that by his stripes you were healed. Oh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring that healing virtue to you. I have a preacher friend of mine, and we're friends. We're brothers. He don't believe in it the way I do, but I don't get mad at him. I just tell him to stay sick. I'm not going to break my relationship with him. He said, Bob, I've got a lot of questions about healing. I said, God got a lot of answers about healing. He said, will you try to answer one for me? I said, go ahead. He said, did Jesus carry the sicknesses of the whole world in his body? I said, absolutely, I believe that. He said, then how come you see all the sick folks around? And I was fishing for an answer. I was saying, Lord, help me. Then it dawned on me. I said, can I answer your question with a question? And I knew what his answer would be. I said, did Jesus carry the sins of the whole world on, the, on his body, on the tree? Well, I said, of course he did. I said, then how come you see all these sinners around? Same question. Boy, did he have a good answer. Why? He said, they haven't heard the good news yet. That's why God has to raise up preachers. I said, that's the answer I was looking for. Them sick folks haven't heard the good news, and God's raised up us preachers to tell the good news. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to live in sickness or disease or infirmity. Two thousand years ago, Jesus Christ paid the price for you to be well, and by His stripes, I am healed. Can you shout amen? Jesus said, speak to the mountain. There's that voice of faith again. Whatever that sickness is, talk to it. He said, if you'll speak to the mountain and say, mountain, 
be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, the mountain has to obey your voice. He said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and then you shall have them. Somebody said, I don't feel it yet. You're not supposed to. Believe you receive it. I don't have it. You ain't supposed to. Believe you have it. And then you shall receive it. Raise your hands and shout amen. Oh, Lord, I'm getting beside myself. I'm reading from Matthew 9. Portion of verse 22. Daughter, be of good courage. Be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. The value of faith. The vision of faith. The voice of faith. And now, the vitality of faith. Look at that fifth chapter of Mark. Verse 27. Listen. And when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. She pressed through the crowd. Faith has vitality to it. Some of you church folks been sitting that pew so long. No wonder they call it pew. Some of you have been in it 20 years and 30 years. And you say, I know the Lord's a healer. One of these days, He's going to come right by my pew and He's going to heal me. Oh, no, He's not. One of these days, you're going to die. And we're going to bury you. Are you listening to me? Faith isn't lazy. Faith has vitality to it. Faith always finds a way. Are you listening to me? When this little woman put her faith to work, she said, if I can just get close enough to where he is, let me touch the hem of his garment. Now the devil knew that that was her faith. So the devil had a crowd of people around Jesus. And they said she couldn't get to him because of the press. He had problems with the press too, didn't he? This is a different kind of press. They were crowding in on him. Now, if that would have been you or me, we'd have said, well, I'll come back tomorrow. You know where he'd have been tomorrow, don't you? Listen to me. Faith don't work tomorrow. Faith works now. The first word in the 11th chapter of Hebrews is now. Faith is, not was, or not will be. Hear me, church. The devil will try to get you to throw it in the past. If he can't get you to throw it in the past, he'll get you to throw it over into the future. But I come to tell you, God is a right now God. And faith knows how to go through every obstacle. No matter what the devil throws in your path, he will make a way where there is no way. Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The trial of your faith is more precious than gold tried in the fire. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you give up when a little trouble comes. But you don't know it. That's when your faith just starting to work. Just hang in there. I come to tell you, help is on the way. God never intended for you to be overcome by the devil. God intended for you to be the overcomer. 
He never intended for you to be the victim. You are the victor because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Shout yes! The vitality of faith. You know, many times God will put you in that position. I preached a message on this when God commanded Moses to lead his people out. They put one way out. And that's through the Red Sea. Right through trouble. And then God hardens Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh's heart and makes him sorry that he left him go, so he go after him. And then when they got to the sea, it said God told them to move down at the edge of the sea. He positioned them. There ain't no way out now. God put him in that mess. Then here comes Pharaoh. He can't move out to the right or left. There's mountains. Pharaoh on the trail. Moses hear the hoofbeats. And he starts praying. Lord! Hey! What are we going to do now? And I love this about God. God says, tell my people to go forward. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Forward? That's a sea out there. It's overflowing its bank. Go forward! Oh, I love this. Listen to me. Faith never goes back. Faith never detours. Faith goes straight ahead. Somebody says, but there's a mountain there. Tunnel through the thing. God will make a way where there is no way. That's where the miracle comes in. Faith has vitality. It moves. He said, Lord... You want us to go forward? The sea! What do you got in your hand? The rod! We'll use it! Stretch it out! How many times have I said this? I know Moses ain't no Baptist. If Moses was a Baptist, he'd have got a finance committee together. And he'd have built a boat to get across that thing. But Moses was one of them Pentecostal preachers. He didn't have no money, didn't have no finance committee. All he had was the Word of God, and God told him to stretch it out. And all he did was stretch it out, and the waters rolled back on both sides. Come on, shout amen. Now let me get this straight, Bert. You put this thing through a computer, didn't you? Three million Jews. All right, three million Jews, and took them all night to cross. One night to cross. How many troops were shoulder to shoulder? 5,000 abreast. 5,000 troops. That wasn't no little swath God made through there. But 5,000 men shoulder to shoulder walked over on dry ground because God made a way where there was no way. Can you shout amen, somebody? Woo! Pardon me while I shout a little bit. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that the faith of God has some vitality to it. God never healed anybody laying down. Jesus never healed anybody laying down on a stretcher. He said, rise, take up your bed and walk. God ain't never going to heal you in a wheelchair. He ain't never going to heal you on a stretcher. you got to show some vitality. You get up, take the first step, and God will give you the next 4,000 steps. Can you shout amen, somebody? This is what he's looking for. Oh, hallelujah. You know, this man Paul thrills me. I want you to turn in your Bible in closing this thing for this day's broadcast. 2 Corinthians 4, 8. Listen. Paul says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power 
may be of God and not of us. It's God's power. This ain't Shambach's power. That the power may be of God and not of us. Paul says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Oh, hallelujah. You might be able to steal everything I have, but you can't touch what I got under my fifth rib. I know my Redeemer liveth, and though the devil slay me, yet will I trust him. Shout yes, somebody. The faith of God is alive. It's full of vitality. I've learned how to put it to work, and the miracle is mine because I have learned how to trust the Lord. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me. Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I finally come to the climax. The victory of faith. This is it. This is the final consummation. Faith always ends up in victory. Can you shout praise the Lord? Turn with me to Luke's gospel again. Let me read verse 44, that eighth chapter, if you will. 844, she came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately... Her issue of blood staunched. She drew something out of him. I love this. This woman drew something out of him. Now there's a lot of people touching him. You listen to this. A lot of you folks never missed a Sunday school. You got all them pins hanging on there for 21 consecutive years. Well, when you walk, you walk lopsided because of all them pins. God ain't going to heal you because you've been in Sunday school 21 years. Are you listening to me? This woman drew something out of him. Now, Peter was so astonished when Jesus stopped and said, Who touched me? Peter said, Master, they all got their hands on you. And you said, who touched me? See what I'm trying to get at? You can be in a tent where there's thousands of people. One can get healed, and the one next to her can go back home the same way without a thing. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Those people were pressing so close to him, and I can picture him rubbing him down.
getting close to Jesus. But here comes a little woman from behind and just touches his garment. So unpretentious. And Jesus stops. Who touched me? He said, somebody touched me with faith. He said, I felt the virtue go out of me. She drew something out of him. The only one in that crowd that got a miracle. Hear me! If there's only one that's going to get it, I'm going to be the one. You hear me? I dare you to turn around and look at somebody and say, Tonight's my night for a miracle. I dare you to say it there in your home where you are. Listen to this. Faith always ends in victory. Always. There's no other ending to faith but victory. You have the faith, but it won't do you a lick of good until you learn how to put it to work. Can you shout praise the Lord with me, somebody? Hallelujah. 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 I always like to tell this story. And I've said it so many times on radio, but it bears repeating. A little woman came to me carrying a sheet with her husband in the sheet. Dying with a cancer. Are you listening? She brought him into that meeting, brought him right down that aisle, dropped him at my feet. I'll never forget this. Faith triumphing. She came with that sheet. I wonder what she had in that sheet. Dropped it at my feet, and when she turned that thing loose, I saw this skeleton. A man, skin and bones. The stench that came from that sheet almost knocked me out. I knew it was cancer. I knew it. That woman looked up at me, and she said, I've been traveling all night with my man. Now she said, you do what God called you to do, and heal my husband. This is when you find out whether you're called and sent. Or whether you just went. When you are called and sent by God, you are going to be about your father's business. Can you shout amen? Amen. But when I saw that man in that sheet, I wanted to hear something from that woman. Ah, this is my kind of woman. She said, Brother Schambach, my husband's got three days to live, 72 hours. My doctor said 72 hours. She said, now one of them days already eaten up. When he told me that, I said, I'm taking him to Houston. Get him dressed. No, sir. She says, I'm not getting him dressed. Now, I know Houston have all them specialists down there. NASA's down there, and they have all the specialists. But they're going to give you the same diagnosis I did. Your husband's going to die. She said, I ain't taking him to no specialist. I'm taking him to a man of God that knows how to pray the prayer of faith. He said, what? He said, I don't believe in that. She said, you don't have to. He's my man. I believe in it. Isn't that beautiful? Boy, I love this. Now, most women trying to get rid of their husband. But this one wants to hang on to that old boy. That's the kind of woman to have, isn't it? And she said, I'll sign him out of the hospital. The doctor said, that's your prerogative to do that, but I will hide his clothes. She said, I'll steal the sheep. You see, faith always finds a way. There's never a barricade to faith. Faith will knock it down somehow. Don't you ever give up. If your preacher says you're going to die, say the devil's a liar. The Bible said I shall live and not die. I refuse to believe that report. Are you listening to me? And I'll never forget that precious woman. She said, when he went out of that room with my husband's clothes, I just took the sheet and threw it around him, put him on my shoulder, and sneaked out the back, down the stairs. and Put him in the back of the car. She said, I've been driving all night to get here. Laid hands on him. 
I curse that cancer. The voice of faith. I said, you devil called cancer, I curse you at the roots. Die and come out of him. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Threw the sheet back on him. I said, get him out of here. He's healed. In my spirit, I knew it. He didn't get up and walk. Man, he was a human skeleton. She picked him up, put him right back on the shoulder, headed out. Didn't even wait for the offering. She got halfway back and she turned around and she said, I'll see you when you get to New Orleans, Brother Samba. Six months later, I put the tent up. First night of the meeting, coming from this side, man in a brand new blue suit. I didn't know who he was. 205 pounds. Now, generally... Generally, my ushers would have been on him. They wouldn't let him up that ramp. But somehow they just became mummified. And that man came up that ramp, picked me up, my feet off the ground, dancing me around that platform. And I'm hollering, put me down! He said, I was the man that was in the sheet. I said, get out of here. He said, Brother Schambach, when my wife took me back to that doctor, the one that told me I had 72 hours, she took me back to that hospital in the sheet. He examined me and couldn't find that cancer anywhere. Completely healed by the power of Christ. Are you listening? He said, now I'm an assembly of God evangelists going around casting devils of cancer out of everybody else. Hallelujah. I said, pick me up and dance me around some more. God made a way where there was no way. Can you shout amen? Every one of you that are listening to this broadcast, don't you let the devil knock you down. You may be down, but you ain't out yet. Take the mandatory eight count. The fight ain't over yet. Get back into the battle because your elder brother put his foot on the neck of the devil and by his stripes you are healed. The miracle is yours. And today is your day. Hey! Yeah, she can have mơ thôi. 
thôi Em chỉ cần là mưa thôi Còn ai dân là nắng rồi Em chỉ cần là mưa thôi Cho anh ngồi êm trôi Cho anh được ôm em kia trời nắng Và ôm em kia trời mưa Và có anh có mặt trời Em như là cuộc đời Có được nhau lập thời Không cần mưa nào mà nơi Anh muốn em Mau về đây để cầm ngừng trôi Anh muốn em Là cuộc đời trong hôm nay Vũ bao con đoàn như sự trên đời Anh chỉ mong muốn có em bên người Muốn muốn mà mà Đừng làm hình tim để âu đầu Yêu em nhờ em mà mong cầu Chỉ muốn gặp em ở trong đầu Anh không So that- 
first class ticket to the top, no limit. I don't play no gimmicks. I'ma take you to the clinic. If you want a taste, come at me and you will be replaced. They won't find a trace of you anywhere or any place. So So foggy, but I've never seen clearer I don't really think anyone can save me And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving I like to be my own worst enemy There's no risk if you don't try at anything So I'ma just get by in everything See you in the next life, have to be a better me I don't think that my head's on straight Gotta flip it and grip it and go and get an x-ray What's wrong with me? I just feel way Pushing on my chest and it's squeezed till I suffocate Better change my mindset, meditate It's pretty cool that I'm alive and have better days I could walk, see, hear, I should celebrate Think I could change my mind, maybe elevate Living life, every day, late at night Not okay, all I want, and I pray All I need, are some better days Yeah, all I need, are some better days Cause all I want Kinda stuck between a rock and a hard place Do I work hard or live at my pace? You're only young once, yeah that's all great But I also want a future where I'm okay Living life is doing lots of cocaine Wait no, it's living with no shame Wait no, it's sleeping in on Sundays I guess it's different for each of us and that's okay Well I just wanna be happy How to get there, hmm, glad that you asked me I think it's different for everyone Some of us need work, others need fun Some of us need purpose to overcome But try to do what you love when it's said and done Cause there's so many differences in each of us Trust your gut, it can show you what you want Living life, every day, late at night Not okay, all I want, and I pray All I need, are some better days Yeah, all I need, are some better days Cause all I want, and I pray I believe in the better day Living life, every day not okay, all I want, and I pray, all I need are some better days, yeah, all I need are some better days, cause all I want, and I pray, I believe in the better days.